and then notate deep in your diary. What check engine lights are on? Pretty sure this one's just came on from the factory. It's kind of just like a, hey, I'm running. Here's a light bulb. Today we're going to be doing a gauge cluster swap on our OBS Ford pickup. That's pretty much anything from the 90s, but we're going to specifically talk about a 94 to 95 cluster. 92 and 93 clusters, well, they're pretty close. They actually just have a different pinout. Other than that, they're physically identical. Swap's actually super easy. The hardest part of the whole process was tracking down a reasonably priced gauge cluster. Now you really can't even find a gauge cluster that has a tachometer for less than 120 buckaroos on the old flea bay. And confusingly, the cluster that doesn't have a tack, I have no idea why that's worth so much money. I've tried nothing and I'm fresh out of ideas. So I guess sell your old one for 90% of the cost of a new one. But after months of scrounging around at my local pick and pull, found this hunk of shit. Nice crack over here. Nice little chipperoni in this corner. I'd say it's at least not dirty, but um, well, it is. You guys know how I like swapping worse parts than the ones I currently have into things. Before you even get started with your actual swap, go ahead and turn your ignition just to run, but don't actually start it. You'll see that a lot of your warning lights all turn on, and that'll give you a really good indication of what is actually working on your cluster. On our truck, for some reason, the high beam indicator doesn't work. High beams work, but not the indicator itself. So I'm not gonna <laughs> dig into that right now. This will come in really handy if you're also swapping to LED bulbs like we are in this case, and you actually have a bulb that's backwards. Remember, LED bulbs are polarity sensitive. So if you have a positive and negative swapped, you just gotta turn her back around, but maybe it doesn't work in this truck's case or the check engine light. Now for this whole tachometer gauge cluster upgrade situation to work, you gotta have the right cluster. How do you tell that? Great question, you. On the back side of the circuit board gauge panel, well, it says eight cylinder. Make sure you pair an eight cylinder with something that's got eight cylinders-ish. Six cylinder, well, make sure it's got six cylinders-ish. Now to get your old gauge cluster out, gotta pop off the black bezel that goes around, well, everything on the dash. Uh, if you're feeling frisky, or not feeling frisky, go ahead and remove the lower panel as well. That's gonna give you access to the gear selector. That, that little guy right there, yeah, that one. That's the cable that runs from the prundle on the gauge cluster up to your column. Once you've got your cable disconnected, go ahead and remove the mounting bracket that actually has the little adjustment knob on it. Now drop that ass in the steering column, I guess, and your shifter all the way to the bottom. That way you get a little bit of extra space to finagle out your gauge cluster. It's gonna be awful. <laughs> You're gonna take some emotional damage. You're gonna love it. Now that we've got the gauge cluster in the laboratory, which is just my living room floor, you know, some microfibers, some paper towels, and my favorite interior detailer, which is actually just a tire dressing, finish care. Top coat tire dressing. This stuff is actually amazing. Just, just go buy it. Don't, don't think about what you're about to buy, just buy it. Then we're gonna clean this new gauge cluster up so it doesn't, um, well, look like this. Oh, there's white underneath there. Once you got it looking mm, better than it was before, remove any extra stickers that are on it. Now the first step to this gauge cluster restoration is getting the old cover out of the way or what pieces come off of it. Then remove your prundle module. I call them prundles because it's park, reverse, neutral, drive, low most of the time, so prundle. It's short for park, reverse, neutral, drive, low. That's a word, sort of, if it's an acronym form of a verbiage for prundle. It's pretty, pretty clear. Don't know how I could say it any other way. All the modules are actually just held in with tension. So get your fingies under there, just pry them loose. Those studs on the back of the stepper motors are actually what drive your gauges. Check all those contacts for any corrosion or weirdness happening. For technical assistance on the speedometer slash odometer module, call Ford Electronics at 1-800. Do not place cluster face. So I can't really read that sticker, but it's kind of alluding to we shouldn't have put her upside down. But since I can't read it, we're in this weird Schrodinger's cat situation of maybe I mess it up. Maybe we should call Ford from a number from 1995. That's probably not gonna go anywhere, but they also removed the number because the sticker just doesn't seem to. We're just gonna say, maybe just don't flip your cluster over, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Maybe your sticker is better than mine. Now that you've got the tacky gauge cluster completely disassembled, start disassembling your old cluster. 
And you might be saying, Matt, why are you taking the old one apart? You just bought a new one and it's in worse shape than your other. Well, you're gonna need the speedometer out of your old unit to place in your new one. You could technically leave the other one in there and void out all the steps and all my voice for the rest of the video, but <laughs> you know you want this shit. And secondly, how are you gonna get your mileage on there, bro? You could send it out to a service and they'll get it calibrated, yada, 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 if you don't have a working speedometer in your old truck, but swapping your old one into your new one, the easiest way to just take care of that problem by just completely avoiding it. Sit back and listen to the mellow vibes while I clean this speedometer uh, from all the chewing tobacco. It looks like it's been drooled all over it. That's nice, is what you're thinking to yourself. Wow, that's a speedometer, is also what you're saying. Oh yeah, that's hot. Nothing but the finest unemployed Saab engineers on the case here. In true fashion, both of my units have broken Prindle cables. So we're gonna repair the worst of the two. Take your bet on which one's worse. I use a little bit of sandpaper to roughen up the slick tube. Then using one of my sluttiest pair of dykes, I snipped off this little thingy. That allowed me to fit a really small adhesive heat shrink over the whole tube assembly. Now, you don't wanna get this too hot because then you're gonna have a fun melty situation, but get it just hot enough so it starts to shrink and then make sure while you're going to move the cable back and forth so it doesn't get stuck. Now take the speedometer out of the non-tag gauge cluster and put it in the new tack gauge cluster. Well, the stickers on the outside of the gauge cluster, they just annoy the hell out of me. The ones on the inside that are actually on the face plates of your gauges, take those off. At this point in their careers, they're starting to get all flaky and gross. And as they fall apart, they leave this dust all over everything that's also sticky, which is super neat if you're into terrible things. And then assembling it is just the reverse of taking it apart. Nerd out with me here for a second. I think it's really cool how gauge clusters actually transfer the bulb light to the like face of the gauge cluster. I don't know why I really like that. Like, look at the swoopy waterfall thing. And then look at this other one that's designed to get it to the needles. Isn't that the most radical badass shit you've ever seen in your fucking life? But speaking of needles, make sure if you do pull off the needle, well, you're gonna have to <laughs> reset it the way it came off. So be prepared. And uh, I actually recommend not taking the needles off unless you have to and clean in there with like a Q-tip or just a microfiber to get underneath everything. So just like the stickers on the face plates of the unit, unfortunately the adhesive that bonds the actual plastic to the metal face plate of the actual gauge, it's peating. The head fell off, like from Dumb and Dumber where the bird, they tape the head back on and they call it peating because the face plate or the head, you, you get it, don't worry about it. We're gonna have to reattach that. Super glue or epoxy works just fine, but make sure the holes line up on the top and bottom or else they're not gonna line up. And then you're gonna have a not lined up problem. Wow. That's basically how it came from the factory in another vehicle. And then I treated myself to a fresh lens cluster. Mainly because the old one was terrible but not broken and the new one was just in seven pieces. So I thought, why not? $18? I deserve this this year. It's the one thing. And then all you gotta do, throw it back in the truck. Now, plug your harnesses in, turn the lights on, Put the condition key in and turn it to run. Make sure all of your bulbs that you've swapped out, if you're doing that or reusing the old ones, everything still lights up the same as it did before. Now, depending on the condition of your circuit board filament, plastic material that's on the back of it, you might have some corrosion on those little copper contacts that your bulb socket actually docks into. Be prepared to rough them up a little bit, clean them up with some alcohol if you're not getting a good connection. And while I was putting my trim panels back together, <laughs> I realized it's kind of got hair on it. Here we are, wasn't that a riot? It's almost like that looks like it came from another vehicle. Almost exactly like that. Like they put it on other models of the truck. It's just, here's a picture of a gauge cluster at this point. Now, do you want to see more of this slammed right into the face of your spam inbox folder every couple of weeks? Well, I've got the solution for you. <laughs> oh boy, that one's, that one's nice size. Like, yeah. Well, do that thing and stuff will happen. 